So let's spend a couple of minutes talking about troubleshooting. So people who are saying, well, look, I've been on this now and I'm not getting better. Why is that? How long have they been on? I've heard people say after a week or two, hey, how come I'm not getting better? We have seen a few people who will begin to get better after just a few days. That's typically because they've had extreme exposure at home to things like mycotoxins and just getting them out of the environment, getting them into some ketosis, getting them improving their metabolic status, getting them on the right diets, et cetera, getting them some sleep. Those things can begin to make changes fairly quickly. But for most people, we're talking about three to six months before you'll really start to see them getting better. And you'll have a, a kind of typical pattern. The first thing is the decline will slow. The second thing is it will stop. The third thing is their spouses will often say, hey, wait a minute, they did something they haven't been able to do in a while. One spouse said to me uh, that, uh, you know, they got into the car and they'd forgotten, oh, wait a minute, I forgot directions to get to this place. Now, this is a while ago before people were typically using their uh, iPhones to get to places. But the wife has simply said, oh, yeah, um, uh, the wife who, who was on treatment said, oh, yeah, you go left here, right, left, left, right, right. And the husband turned to her and said, you haven't been able to do that in years. So you'll hear these things and then people start to see real improvements as you continue to optimize things. So that's the typical pattern. How well documented? Be careful. You want to make sure. Is it possible that the person's cognitive changes are because of a brain tumor? Did they not get an MRI? Is it possible that it's because of frontotemporal dementia? Now, to be fair, we've seen people with uh, Lewy body disease, and there are about a million Americans with Lewy body, so it's fairly common. They will respond typically very well. They typically have a type three like picture. They have toxin associated cognitive decline, and they tend to do very well in this protocol. Frontotemporal dementia, we've had a few people, but it's a much less common problem. And we, there's a lot we still don't know about that. So it's probably going to require a modified protocol to get best outcomes. So the question is, if they're not getting better, it, this, is this really an Alzheimer related? Is this pre Alzheimer's that you're talking about or Alzheimer's? Or is this something that maybe is completely different that you're that this is not really related to? This, this approach should do very well for Alzheimer's and pre-Alzheimer's, for Lewy body disease, for vascular dementia. We don't know yet about things like progressive supranuclear palsy. We don't know yet about corticobasal degeneration. Now, the good news is the vast majority of cases are going to be one of those three, are going to be Alzheimer's, vascular, or Lewy body. But there are those few that are going to be other, and you may have to look further to see what's going on there. Have you achieved mild ketosis? Um, when I'm typically asked by these patients, well, you know, I'm not doing that well. Okay, what's your ketone level? Well, I'm not doing that part. Okay, well, then why, what are you asking about? Uh, that's part of what's critical. We need to be able to get them to be metabolically flexible, burning the glucose, and able to burn the ketones. Are they on a good fat, fats-based diet so that they're getting appropriate support for the brain? How advanced was the process? So in fact, people who are, you know, of course, later and later in the process, and I always encourage people, when you're dealing with your first few people, don't start with someone who has a single digit MOCA score. So start with someone who's got a MOCA of 23 or above. These are people that you can make better and it really shows you, yes, they can get better. Yes, they can stay better. It shows you what it takes to do that. These people who are very advanced, there's a lot more that has to be done. It's much tougher and the outcome is at least less uh, assured. And then the most common cause for not getting better is a lack of compliance. Are they working with a health coach? Are they getting the right things? Are they getting into ketosis? Are they getting the exercise? Are they metabolically flexible? Are they doing all the appropriate things? Are they optimizing their metabolic parameters? Has their homocysteine improved? And we looked at the metabolic parameters in the clinical trial we did. And interestingly, all of these parameters were statistically significantly improved. So they improved on their insulin resistance and they improved on their homocysteine and they improved on their HSCRP and things like that. The second most common cause of 
not getting better um, is type three, where the people are just severely toxic and it takes years to get these toxins down. And then there's another one that I call the too important syndrome. These are people who say, well, look, I'm going to Europe for three months. You know, that, yeah, you know, I'll deal with the cognitive decline later. I'm going to take a couple of supplements uh, three months from now. I'll be back. I'll, I'll be back for a couple of days. Then I'm going to go do something else. I'm going to go do something else. You really do have to live this approach. We're changing your synaptic neurochemistry. And the idea of doing it part-time every few months um, is simply typically not working. And then what about nocturnal oximetry? Are you dealing with someone who's dropping into the 80s at night and just doesn't know it? And what about their oral health? Are you dealing with someone who has oral pathogens and again, doesn't know it? Well, they're gonna keep making amyloid to be fighting those oral pathogens as they enter the brain. Then do you need a SERS consultant? And as Dr. Richard uh, Shoemaker, Richie Shoemaker pointed out years ago, uh, most of these people who have the type three don't fit his criteria for SERS. Some of them do, but many of them don't, but they have similar markers. Their TGF beta one's high, their C4A is high, <clears throat> their uh, MMP9 is often high. So they have a similar response. Um, and so you may want to talk with someone who has dealt with a lot of cases of mycotoxicity, an expert, for example, the ICI group, Mary Ackerley and her, and her many uh, uh, colleagues in that group. Is there undiagnosed sleep apnea or UARS, as I mentioned earlier, low SpO2? Are they getting regular brain training? Are they just doing supplements only? A lot of people will say, oh, I'm just going to do this part. Well, they, they're supplementary for a reason. The key is just as Dean Ornish found many years ago for cardiovascular disease, there's a threshold. You've got to get there in a situation where they've got demand here and supply here. We need to lower the demand and increase the supply so that this network can now kick into action again. They can once again make and keep synapses. You want to keep tweaking. Do you have continued exposure? This is another common one. People are living in moldy houses and they may do some super, superficial remediation, but they're still living in very moldy houses. Do they have leaky gut that's continuing or oral pathogens? Do they have an undiagnosed chronic infection? I'll show you an example in just a moment here. Um, are you doing ineffective detox? So that's another one. And then are the major underlying causes, the big things that create cognitive decline are anything that's causing ongoing inflammation, trophic withdrawal, insulin resistance, toxic exposure. If you have addressed those things optimally, then they're typically doing well. And then finally, you know, as a scientist, when I was training, I never thought it was important, behavior, purpose, joy, stress reduction. And obviously, uh, functional medicine has made it very clear that these are powerful, uh, par powerful antidotes to chronic illness. Uh, and so getting people to have the behavior, and we've had a few people who just say, you know, I really don't care. I don't want to do the things to get better. Recently, we had a guy who came in with clear cognitive decline and actually his friend brought him and was working with him, put him through the standard evaluation and looked and said, okay, you've got very addressable things here, here, here. He had some clear insulin resistance. He had some, had metabolic syndrome. He had some ongoing inflammation. And he just said, nah, this is not for me. I, I, I really, I don't want to do these things. Just, just, you know, give me a medicine and I'm going to go downhill. And so you do have to have people that, that are really interested. We can't make people better who don't want to be better. <music>